What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be going over the top 10 heroes that are in Elite Shards that you should absolutely not be building in game. I know for a lot of newer players, you see heroes coming out of the Elite Shards, you think, oh, they're an Elite Hero, they gotta be good. Well, maybe at one point in time, they might have been good. But right now, not so much. So we do have news coming up that more heroes are going to be removed from the Elite Hero Shards, which is great news. You could probably pick a few of them off this list right here that you're going to see. But today, we're going to be going over the top 10 heroes that you should not be building in Elite Shards. So let's jump into it. We're going to start off with the Shadow Faction. Let's start it off with probably the newest the newest of the elite heroes that are still in elite shards, but do not do anything in the current game. Number one is going to be Kamath. Does he look awesome? Does he look amazing? Absolutely. I love how he's like one of the coolest looking heroes in game, but he does next to no damage and his CC with his petrify has become pretty useless. When he did come out, he was on pretty much every single PVP team out there. Um, his CC back in the day used to be really great, really game breaking. Um, he'd had damage reduction built into, uh, he was really strong, but, uh, he's one that has not lasted the test of time. He has not gotten any reworks and I wouldn't be surprised if we soon see him drop out of elite hero shards. Uh, he's just essentially not relevant. Even in sea land, you would think his CC would be useful, but not really. He is just a hero you do not want to build anymore. Next up in the Shadow Faction, because yes, there's a lot of Shadow Faction heroes still in the Elite Shards that should not be. Number two is going to be Corpse Demon. So he is, I believe, the tankiest hero in game. He literally has the highest health pool. At least that was, that was true about six months ago. I don't imagine any of the newer heroes that came out are any tankier, but... Corpse Demon is literally just that shield, that meat shield in the front. He can freeze your enemies. He can do some good self-healing. But does he have any use? Absolutely not. The healing is not enough nowadays to keep him alive. The tankiness is not useful either. He's just not a hero you want to build. Again, another cool looking hero. But not really anybody you want to be building. The third hero, and, and this could be a little debatable, is going to be Aiden. So Aiden early game could be okay up to nine stars, but I highly, I would highly recommend not build, building Aiden. Most of Aiden's ability comes from when he dies, he will do big AoE damage against the enemy team. Very early game, that could be useful, but it will drop off very, very quickly, especially when there's heroes in the meta like Garuda, who's actually going to heal when enemies die or allies die at that. So there's really no great synergy. He doesn't have good damage. The silence against warriors, that's the thing of such a pass where you like you silence or CC a specific class. It kind of dates how old he is. He is one of the oldest heroes on this list. And yeah, he just doesn't stand the test of time. He did have a usefulness back when the auras were around where you literally had to have certain compositions to get certain aura buffs for your team. And you would use two of these in a Mim Cheese. But since that has gone away, he's lost complete useless or complete, complete usefulness and is a hero you definitely want to dodge. And number four, the last one from the Shadow Faction is Bade. Now, I know Bade is the meme of idle heroes. Everybody loves Bade. And then they slowly, slowly transition into realizing Bade is not that good. Does he look cool? Again, yes. The Shadow Faction heroes look awesome. They are cool. He has such a unique ability where he cannot crit, but he has this four times damage multiplier that can happen. It's interesting. He's a cool hero. Aesthetically, he's pleasing. He's gone through a couple different models since he joined the game way back when. We, we all miss Bade's horse. But at the end of the day, he's just not going to do much for you in the long run. I highly recommend you avoid building him, even though I know a lot of people in the comments are probably going to shout, but I built Bade to 10 star. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't do it. Trust me. There's plenty of other options to build unless you're just going all in because you love the hero. Definitely avoid it. So those are the four from the Shadow Faction. <laughs> the first four, uh, they definitely have the most heroes that are still in Elite Shards that are not worth building. Next up, let's jump over to Abyss. Oh, the Abyss Faction. The faction that I love the most, and it seems like DH Games hates the most as well. So, yes, we did get Marax recently. He's a cool hero, but I do feel like Abyss has become the red-headed stepchild of of the game there are three heroes here that are still in elite shards that do not do not do not build you might see me build them but don't do it number one is going to have to be the oldest one on here and that is berea back in the day berea would be an awesome 10 star to build to push sea land but He's a dated hero. He only attacks backline or frontline targets. So once you clear the frontline, then he'll hit the backline. Uh, his active makes it so that he's not great in PvE. He's definitely not good in PvP. He is a cool little dwarf, but I do highly recommend you do pass on Berea. Number two is an interesting one, King Barton. So King Barton used to be one of the best PvP meta heroes. You would put him slot one. He would do tons of counterattacks and just completely obliterate the enemy team with all those counterattacks. But yeah, he doesn't actually do much of anything anymore. So he just doesn't do enough damage. He chips away, does little damage here and there. He counterattacks, doesn't do much in Sea Land for you. He is a hero, again, of the past. I wish he would get an update. He did get a slight buff, I believe like a year ago wasn't anywhere near enough so sadly berea and king barton the two dwarfs of the abyss faction are added to that do not build list so there is one more from abyss and i know it'll be shocking to a lot of you guys my love my pride my joy for the longest time scary scary armies are dead and that was literally the only point of scary so what scary does is he puts marks on the targets that let them do more and more stacking damage the more marks you have on them the more damage you will do with scary so what you used to do is build three to four of these scaries stack those marks super fast and do ridiculous damage in pve well that was great and then they just get stronger and stronger and stronger heroes being built out there and scary slowly declines they did give him a slight buff a while back that gave him uh some damage reduction built into his stacks but literally the one use he had was being the god of pve then delacium and ithaca came along knocked him off that perch and ever since he has been a hero that you should absolutely not build so the last three on this top 10 do not build list are a little borderline so these are going to be those support heroes that a lot of people will use early game or they will use them in sea land but you're not going to want to take them past nine or ten star they are fully support heroes but you should not make them one of your main heroes in your lineup so the first one is going to be rosa rosa is a great support yes but he is definitely not a hero you want to prioritize. If you can build him on the side and use him for a little bit and then feed him off, that would be perfectly fine. He is great for doing sea land, but beyond that, not that much. He has a lot of abilities that uh, reduce attack from the enemy, reduce their uh, armor, which are great. But again, not a hero you want to focus on. And the last two that are still in elite shards that do not really have a place first one is going to be valentino valentino at one point was probably in every single pvp lineup when he was uh kind of first around his ability to stun so many enemies on his attack as well as passively with uh with overlord letting allies using their active abilities to have a chance to stun them as well was really really strong at a time but we're in a meta right now where cc is definitely not on the table and you can't just be a cc hero you have to bring damage or utility besides that stun to the table and valentino just does not do that although 
you will need a five star and about like a seven star Valentino to do a uh, fortress sealand. But again, you do not want to build a Valentino past that point. And the very last one, which is probably probably the closest to borderline, maybe build heroes because I know there's a lot of people out there that actually do like Emily. But Emily is one of those support heroes. She's not going to do any damage, but she does have some promise again i would not build her past a certain point she is a support hero and that's all she does essentially she's gonna lower precision speed things like that on the enemy team as well as increasing the attack value and uh and lowering the armor of enemies so she is very very important if you're using penny in sea land if you're using enosuke don't really need her but she does have a role so she is kind of one of those borderline, should you build her? Maybe not. I just don't feel like she deserves the elite title. I could see her getting taken out of elite shards coming up this week as well. But she does have a place as a temporary hero, but do not prioritize her whatsoever. So guys, let me know what you think. Did I put someone on the list you think I shouldn't? Probably Emily, maybe. Did we, should we have added other people like Valkyrie, Starlight, Vesta? I mean, they do have uses for early game players, so that's why I didn't want to put them on the list. They still have a role, while these heroes will not carry you to victory whatsoever in the early game, even by the littlest bit. So I'm really, really hyped to see who they are removing from the Elite Shards this week coming up. As soon as we get some news, I will pass along to you. But hopefully, if you are a newer player, this kind of helps you out helps you realize that not every elite hero is worth building in this game you have to be picky on who you choose so let me know what you guys think hopefully you guys enjoyed it hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys next time